Young lady, get back here. The opening credits instantly crash into Sasha Chrome running fast out of her home with a splattering of paint across her and holding a can of spray paint. Good afternoon, neighbor. Kitty's causing trouble? Sarge asks as Jenny grabs Sasha and starts heading back inside. To say the least, she... Why is your left arm covered in linen bands soaked in flammable levels of alcohol? She asks, and he regards his bandaged hand before chuckling. Difficulties at work, nothing to be worried about. He replies with a grin. Will those be following you? We were very thorough. If they manage to follow me after all that then, well, let's just say they'll have earned their, you know, I should stop talking. Good day, ma'am, Sarge remarks, giving her a cheery wave with his bandaged arm and heading inside his home. Mom, should we be scared of Mr. Thomas? Sasha asks, and there's light studio laughter. No, he just has a dangerous job. Nothing to worry about. Jenny replies, hugging Sasha close. I'm not stupid, Mom. He... Whatever conversation is about to happen is cut off by them seeing the silhouette of a man falling down onto something through his windows. It's shortly followed by the sound of loud snoring. He's loud. More canned laughter greets this observation. Yes, he is now. It's time you get to cleaning up the mess you made, Jenny remarks as she starts to head back inside with the little troublemaker. It's not a mess, it's art. Sasha protests, and the audience laughter is back. The show then heads into Sasha getting a talking to from her father Lyle as she cleans up the large neon splotches of color. It then fades to commercial. Have you ever found yourself pressed in by arcologies and city spires? The commercial shows a Lydris with all of her nine bodies looking up at the city towering above her and seeming to shrink down on herself. Do you want to see a clear horizon? The commercial continues as the Lydris pushes her way through debris and suddenly sees a sunrise. Find all the space you need in the Weathen system. Nova Homesteads can take you to where you can stretch out and relax. Prices start at 50,000 credits, transport and building not included. The next commercial begins. Hey girls, ever wonder how to meet men without being the creep? Register at the bachelor barn and find out. Our facilities take the pain of seeking a way by providing a controlled environment for men to approach women instead. Once you're registered, every call from us is nothing but good news for your dating life. Sign up today. After a commercial for something that's either yogurt or porridge, the show then resumes itself. The second little arc of the episode has kicked off. Sasha is sulking because she was made to clean up the paint. Apparently half the episode is going to be a little girl throwing a fit. Sasha, what's going on? Mojo asks her, and she doesn't answer him either. Why aren't you saying anything? It takes him all of a minute to realize he can have fun with this. Say something if you don't want me to eat all your flavored ice. Oh no you don't, she shouts as the audience laugh track kicks off. A chase begins and Mojo is a spry little fellow to say the least. It takes them around the house with the speakers built into the walls, telling them to stop messing around before they hurt themselves. Eventually, Betty, one of the secondary wives, steps out of where she's integrated into the house and catches Mojo. All right, that's enough out of both of you. Time for standby mode. We're not synth mom, Mojo protests while wriggling around. She lets him loose someone and he climbs around until he's on her back. When's dad coming home? It's an emergency at work, my little spark. It could be a long while, Betty replies warmly. But that's boring. That's life. Sometimes you have to do things you don't want in order to get to the things you want to do, Betty replies, giving Mojo a little tickle. Now, if the little sulk is over... Apparently, it's not over despite Mojo's interference as Sasha crosses her arms and immediately re-engages sulk mode. Seeing this, Betty sighs and quickly puts on an educational bit of VR entertainment for Mojo. He's quickly banging away at simulated instruments that only he can hear. 
The invisible sound baffling surrounding him makes it so no one else is bothered by the sheer racket caused by his wild flailing. Sasha, dear, do you want to talk? Betty asks and gets a little huff as she turns away. Oh dear, this is going to be a thing today, isn't it? You all made me destroy my art. Sasha grunts out and Betty sighs. Sasha, there's a time and place for things and overscanning arpatures with toxic paints while your brother is still young enough to taste things. No, I'm not, Mojo protests and the audience laughter kicks off as both Betty and Sasha look off screen in surprise. They then sit back. Is not the place or time, Betty finishes lamely. But it was beautiful and it wasn't done yet. Sasha protests. It looked like you tried to swallow it all and it all came back up. Mojo shouts from the side and the laughter is back. Sasha takes off and there's a squeal of fear from Mojo as Betty sighs in frustration. There's a banging sound from next door and her current body's internal lighting goes dim. The camera cuts to a wall on the outside of the house that rotates to show another of Betty's bodies which steps out and then looks over the fence to see Sarge rushing around while carrying a large black weapon on his back, racing out his front door and then signaling for a hover bike to zip up. He jumps on it and takes off. Hmm, I really want to know, but I also really don't want to know. She mutters before walking back to the slot in the wall and this body slots itself in. The camera then cuts to an internal wall of the house that rotates to show her stepping out again and she steps out in time to catch both Mojo and Sasha. No running in the house, you two. Can I fly then? Mojo asks cheekily and gets a narrowed eye look from Betty as is the audience giggles. Do you know why I won't let you run in the house? You don't like fun? Mojo asks and there's cheering from the audience at his cheek. No. It's because you have a hard time not running into things while running. Flying is even faster and harder to stop. Betty replies with the patience of a saint. Hey, do you know what the emergency that dad's dealing with? Mojo asks for a change of subject and Betty considers. Well, he's a cargo inspector and apparently there was an unexpected delivery. Oh, that's boring, Mojo notes. The image cuts to a large warehouse with numerous fires and smoke as plasma shots and lasers fly every which way. A sudden explosion in the roof sends down a shaft of light that illuminates the terrified Lyle who wisely has a cargo pallet between himself and the weapon fire. Yay! Ha! Sarge calls out as he pilots his bike through the hole and jumps off it just in time so that it crashes into several of the laser-firing lunatics. He rolls with the landing and brings up the weapon on his back before firing. The scene then crashes back to the Chrome family home. Well, your father never really liked looking for trouble. He's very dependable that way. He's a little non-traditional on his insistence on paying for so much. But that's just sweet. But it's boring. Why would you do boring things for a living? It's like being stuck in school for your whole life, Mojo protests. You don't like school. It's boring. They want us to read only the most boring things and they keep saying show your work with math. It's so stupid. I know the answer. Why should I need to show every little step? They happen too fast for me to write them down. Mojo complaints and Betty giggles. You need to slow down then. Learn to enjoy life. But life is slow. Very slow, Mojo protests and Betty just shakes her head in amusement. Oh, don't you worry. Before you know it, you'll be wishing for days as slow as these. Trust me. Betty assures him, and he just looks confused at the very idea. That's when things fade to commercial again, and it starts with the brand of frozen treats Mojo and Sasha had gotten into an argument over earlier. For some reason, they think that skiing down a mountain of the stuff will make someone want more. The next commercial begins with the sound of an explosion and a pummeling of laser fire. It cuts off to reveal a tiny metak taking shelter behind a ruined air car. Are you outnumbered? The tiny metak nods. Are you outranged by a bevy of unlawful lunatics with an unfair amount of firepower? There's another nod from the tiny woman. 
then come on down to Canid Solutions. Try our 100 Answers weapon line. There's no problem in the galaxy that can't be solved by overwhelming firepower, including an overabundance of firepower. It now shows the tiny Metak with a power pack on her back and plasma cannon bombarding the enemy lines. Canid Solutions, because being outnumbered does not have to mean outmatched. The next commercial starts with some kind of tribal chanting and something hollow being beaten on rhythmically with a stick. It shows a sunrise with a large insectoid creature with a rainbow pattern shell greeting the sun. In an increasingly industrialized galaxy, it is more important than ever to preserve the natural wonders of nature, from the great beasts of singular wonder, to the simpler times still enjoyed by our more primitive brethren. It says showing a colony of what appears to be some kind of simian species with a clear prevalence towards females, but they're also right in the Stone Age with fire being the new fad. We at the Galactic Preservation Organization are dedicated to ensuring the primal parts of the galaxy are protected from poacher and slaver both. Let the wild places stay wild, lest we lose what makes them so special. The commercial then cuts to the logo of the corporation, a pair of squares, one over the other triangle to the side and pointing away. Galactic Preservation, a worthy call for all. The commercials end with Sarge being let out of the passenger's seat of Lyle's vehicle form before the man transforms back to normal. Thanks for the ride, big man. Perhaps you should be a little more careful with your vehicles in the future. It's not my fault. It was a mechanical defect. Sarge answers glibly and Lyle stares at him. A mechanical defect? Sure, if it can't do double duty as a bludgeon, it's clearly not tough enough. He replies, and the audience laughter is back. That's a fairly severe defect. I'm going to have to see about reinforcing it after fixing it. I really don't understand you. Fair enough, I don't understand myself half the time. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm running on only a few hours of sleep and badly need a recharge and defrag. You're a little organic to do that. Maybe, but that's what I'm doing when in bed. Good night. It's still afternoon. It's what you say before sleeping. I see. Well, thankfully, I now have a much less stressful problem to deal with. Oh, maybe I can help? You've done enough for me today. That's your opinion. What's the problem? He asks, and the scene fades away. Dad, Mojo says, running up and then flapping a bit to give his father a hug as he walks in. Hello, little flyer. Did you miss me? He asks hypothetically, but the nodding from Mojo is anything but hypothetical. You gave our neighbor a ride home, Betty asks. He had some vehicle trouble, so I did the neighborly thing. Lyle answers before turning to where Sasha's back to sulking. Ah, so I'm needed. Excuse me. He kisses Betty on the forehead and then walks over to his daughter and eldest child before hugging her. Ew, Dad. Hey, little lady. So your passion for art's causing a little trouble, is it? He asks her and she huffs while looking away. Your mother sent me a message about times and places. Luckily, I've had a bit of a chat with our neighbor. If you want to practice painting walls, then use the fence. Really? There's nothing important on it and Sarge doesn't mind. Just not on the house, okay? What if I run out of fence? Paint over the old stuff? Make art out of art? He asks, and her eyes light up and she slips out of his grip. I'm going to start right now, she declares. Are you sure that's a good idea, Lyle? Rewarding bad behavior just leads to more of it and pressing down too harshly just brings about resentment. She has a talent and needs an outlet. If we give her one, then most of the problems go out that way, Lyle replies before shrugging. Besides, it's just a cheap wooden fence, much easier to replace or clean than the more delicate equipment incorporated into the house. Just take a pressure washer to it if things are bad, or even a laser sweep if really bad. The audience laughter closes out the episode. As the credits play, it shows Sasha painting the fences with garish colors and little if any really recognizable patterns beyond a few attempts at making her own name a signature. 
Her signature gets increasingly fancy as it goes down the fence until it's massively stylized and artistically tilted with a preference for neon pink and dark purple. 